My name's Jeff, and I love beer. I don't just mean that I love to drink it, though. I mean I'm passionate about the history of beer, how it's made, and what's in store for the future of beer. Some might call me a beer snob, but I see it a bit differently. I want to learn about all beers. It's time to go exploring in the world of beer. This is a homebrew supply shop. Joe? That's me. How are you? Good. I hear you're the guy to talk to here at the Cask and Kettle. How long have you guys been open? I opened the store about two and a half years ago. So in that time, you've been teaching people to turn hops, grains, and water into magic. Absolutely. Looking around, it looks like you can get pretty much anything you need here. We offer pretty much everything you need to get started brewing, all the way up through your most advanced techniques. We offer brew on premise, geared towards first time or casual brewers, but also available to your regular seasoned brewer. It allows you to come in, choose a recipe. We take you through the process of brewing, walk you through using all the equipment, and teach you everything you need to know. Since I've brewed about 10 batches at home, I probably know nothing, so it'd probably be good to take a refresher course. Do you mind if we take a look around the shop? Not at all, it'd be my pleasure. So Joe, this is a fun room because we're surrounded by ingredients. This is the basis of making beer in here. Can you explain a little bit about what we're looking at? Absolutely. Along this center aisle here, the back wall, and on this side we have all of our various cereal grains that we use for making our beer. In our refrigerator over here, we store all of our hops and uh, liquid yeast cultures. Mm -hmm. And on this side we have various things like malt extracts and syrup and dried form. We also have quite a bit of extra supplemental items. Yeah, I mean, I can see pumpkin, I can see brown sugar, honey. You get a lot of interesting stuff going on. On the back wall, I saw a candied sugar, wood chips. So I'm assuming all this is just to make more flavor in beer. Absolutely, many different styles of beer demand variation in their ingredients. For instance, we use a lot of the candy sugar and things like Belgian beer styles. Can you tell me the difference between the dry yeast and the liquid yeasts? Well, for a long time, dry yeast was always thought to be inferior. For a lot of brewers years ago, it was all you could get your hands on. Mm -hmm. The selection quality wasn't really up to par, especially with where we are today. These days, our selection of dry yeast has really come full circle. We have a broad array of dry yeast that we can use here in the refrigerator. You can see we have quite a bit oh, wow. in the way of selection for varied yeast cultures. The biggest difference is these yeasts will keep much better on the shelf for a longer period of time. That's one. Whereas these are live active cultures. They're dormant while they're cold. We bring them up to temperature. Also brewers use them to create starters where they culture and propagate larger quantities for their pitch. In stock at any given time we usually have between 36 and 39 different types of pellet hops and that's what you're seeing here. We also do stock whole leaf hops. The hops that we carry run the full gamut of application. We have hops that are dedicated for bittering purposes. We also have your lower alphas, we have your aroma hops, flavor hops. There's such a broad array and this doesn't even scratch the surface. Now what's the difference between using the pellets and then using fresh hops? A lot of it these days is preference. There's a conversion rate so if your accessibility is uh, you know, limited you can you can actually convert and they can be used interchangeably. The pellets tend to store much better. They're compressed, the resins that provide us with all that bittering and those, those alpha and beta acids, they give a much longer shelf life. And the leaf hops, they take up a lot more space. An ounce of leaf hops versus an ounce of pellet hops. Oh. And so when we talk about storage, shipping, and all those obvious things, logistics and things like that, one of the reasons pellets really have become the mainstay is because of that. We see a lot of people using their leaf hops more for dry hopping or post-fermentation hopping. You tend to get a bit of an earthier flavor character and some earthier aroma characters with the leaf hops, especially in long-term dry hop applications or if you're using quite a bit of them in your boils. Wow, so. fantastic. Uh, and anybody watching at home, keep these away from your dogs. Dogs and hops don't mix. So obviously we have all the ingredients to make fantastic beer, but we need the equipment. Can you show me some of your equipment? I'd be happy to. Excellent. So ingredients are fun, but I think some real homebrew geeks geek out on equipment. We love equipment. Absolutely. You have anything you need to make beer besides the ingredients on the other side right here. It's surrounded by cool stuff. You've got tons of brew kettles going on, you've got the mash paddles, and you've got the starter kits, which are actually really important. You obviously see some new brewers come through your store. How often do you see them turn into returning guests, and then how often do you never see those people again? Because they get frustrated. Most people who get into the hobby tend to stick with it. So you're almost crafting a community 
of brewers by having a store like this? We definitely like to spend time with our customers. A lot of times, sometimes guys will come after hours, stay and hang out, and we can sit around and discuss their beer. We also host a homebrew club monthly here. We don't want people brewing bad beer. Sure. We, we always like people to succeed, enjoy their brew day, and come out with a product that they're yeah. really proud of. Yeah. This piece of equipment has caught my eye. I want this so bad. I use a, a smaller seven and a half gallon kettle and I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have, uh, you know, in there for mashing. So you have a lobster pot. I have a lobster pot. This is the Rolls Royce. This particular setup right here is designed to be an out-of-the-box, all-inclusive mash tun. You could use it as a boil kettle, you could use it for any other application, but it's really designed uh, from the manufacturer to be an all-in-one mash tun system. And it gets you the two weldless bulkheads, your uh, thermometer, a stainless steel ball valve, as well as inside a uh, screen. And it's, if you take care of it, this thing's going to last a long time. Yep. It's a nice middle ground gauge stainless steel pot. As long as you take care of your equipment, it'll take care of you, and stainless steel is always a good investment. This thing is fantastic. I'm going to be back here later to look at this, but before I consider dumping some good money on this thing, I want to check out your brew room. Can we take a look? Let's go. So those other two rooms were fun. This room, though, this is awesome. This is where it all goes down. You get to brew on premise right here. That's right. Well, this is a pretty healthy operation, both in terms of what you're offering up, but in, in size and scope. You gotta have a little bit of help here. I do get some assistance around here. My mother actually was the first assistant. She had come in part-time to help me with the odds and ends, and now she actually digs right in and helps out customers. What's it um, like bossing your mom around? Very awkward. <laughs> it's actually been really impressive because she, she started out with no knowledge of brewing whatsoever and now she's perfectly capable of being here alone, handling questions. And then shortly after that, we started to get very busy in this room, which takes up a lot of time. It's very difficult to handle retail and the brew on premise. And so about a year and a half ago, I brought on my first full-time employee, Mike. Well, bring him on in. Let's, uh, let's have a chat with him. Mike, why don't you come on in here? Mike. How's it going? Thanks for joining us. Good you. Uh, you have a background in science. I do. From what I hear. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming generic. chemistry or? A biology. It's gonna help with brewing. Certainly does. This I is like essentially it. cooking science almost. Yeah, it's actually nice to enjoy the fruits of your labor sometimes. Yes. Uh, maybe more often than I should. Uh, what's it like working here? Fun? That's yeah, excellent. Uh, it's definitely not the worst job I've ever had. I assist in the brew on premise, so I teach all these classes. And whether it's a novice or an advanced brewer, I'm here for them. So you have a lot of folks coming through these doors. They have a lot of beers to pick from. Are there any types of brews that stand out across your clientele line? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we get a pretty wide demographic of people coming through, novices to advanced brewers, and they have a pretty eclectic sense of taste. So we get a lots of different beers being made, but most prominent would be the IPAs or Pale Ales. This is a fantastic place. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go wander around a bit and then spend all of my money. So you'll see me at the register in a little bit. Take your time. Well, your son has an absolutely wonderful store here, and I hope you enjoy continuing to boss him around. I do. I'd also like to thank <laughs> you for helping me spend my money. Anytime.